fiery, but mostly peaceful. Imagine that. Cars burning behind you, buildings are on fire, and the Chiron below you saying, there's peaceful protesters out here, but those same peaceful protesters, you know, burned the building down. It's sort of like, uh, oh, I don't know. Um, my car works, but it really doesn't. I don't know. It, th this is just, this is beyond words. This is all you need to know. The media industrial complex will push a narrative in front of the truth. Their narrative is saying that all these protesters, wink, wink, were mostly peaceful. How many people have died since the George Floyd incident? 30. Actually, 32 now. Those two knuckle nuts in Kenosha tried to attack that kid. But now, here's where we are. CNN blasted for Captain Colin Kenosha protests, fiery, but mostly peaceful. <laughs> That's like, it's a freedom fighter. What does a freedom fighter fight? Freedom? I don't know. These, these euphemisms are just uh, spot on. CNN is getting roasted, again, for describing protests in Wisconsin as fiery but peaceful during a live broadcast that showed a building fully engulfed in flames Wednesday night. The Chiron read, specifically, fiery but mostly peaceful protests after police shooting appeared on the screen as CNN reporter Omar Jimenez delivered a live report in Kenosha. What you're seeing behind me is one multiple location that had been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the course of the night, Jimenez said with a gas mask around his neck. He went on to note that the daytime protests were largely peaceful, but took a violent turn at night. Well, why didn't you say that? It wasn't until night fell that things began to get a little bit more contentious. Yeah, a fire will do that. Things were thrown back at forth. Police started using some of the crowd dispersal tactics like tear gas, even playing very loud sounds to push them out. The clip was ripped on social media, including Eric Trump, who tweeted, Unbelievable, that scene is a total embarrassment to our country. And GOP Rapid Response Director Steve Guest also posted the video. Riots have knocked out Kenosha since the shooting of Jacob Blake on Sunday. The 29-year-old, who is black, was shot seven times by a white police officer while trying to get into his SUV. Demonstrators took a deadly turn late Tuesday when an armed team allegedly shot and killed two men and injured a third. Kyle Rittenhouse, 17, of Antioch, Illinois, has been charged with first-degree intentional homicide. And speaking of Jacob Blake, this is pretty interesting. Not many in the news media actually report on the truth because it doesn't fit their narrative. I say that a lot, but it's the freaking truth. This is why Jacob Blake had a warrant out for his arrest. And trigger warning for you. You know, unkempt fools out there. There's some spicy language in this New York Post article. But it should give you a sense of what this man is like and what he has been like for all his 29 years of life. The cops involved in the shooting of Jacob Blake, which touched off a fresh wave of angry anti police sentiment across the country, were attempting to arrest him for violating a restraining order stemming from an alleged sexual assault. The Post has learned. Blake 29 was forbidden for going on going to Kenosha, home of his alleged, alleged victim from the May 3rd incident, and police were dispatched Sunday, which would be six days ago, following a 9-11 call saying he was there. The responding officers were aware he had an open warrant for sexually for sexual assault, according to dispatch records and the Kenosha Professional Police Association, which released a statement on Friday. The police union's statement also claimed that Blake was armed with a knife at the time of the shooting and put one cop in a headlock and shrugged off two taser attempts while resisting arrest. Any of those things is grounds for arrest or at the basic a detainment. But he had a warrant for sexually assaulting a woman. Hmm, interesting. Blake, who was paralyzed in the shooting, had been handcuffed to his hospital bed due to the warrant, which was vacated Friday. Hmm, I wonder why. According to a statement released by his lawyer, Benjamin Crump, his restraints were removed, but he is still facing criminal charges. Blake is accused of cr in a criminal complaint, which is obtained by the post of breaking into a home of a woman he knew and sexually assaulting her. 
let's let's read this next part. And by the way, like I said, it's going to be a little spicy. But this is why he is warrant was out for his arrest. <clears throat> the victim, who is only identified by her initials in the paper, told police she was asleep in the bed with one of her children when Blake came into the room around 6 a.m. and allegedly said, I want my shit, the record states. She told cops Blake then used his finger to sexually assault her, sniffed it, and said, Smells like you've been with other men, the criminal complaint alleges. <clears throat> The alleged victim said Blake penetrating her digitally caused her pain and humiliation and was done without her consent, and she was very humiliated and upset by a sexual assault, the record states, and who wouldn't be. She told police she was upset by she was upset but collected herself and then allegedly ran out the front door after Blake, the complaint says. She then realized her car was missing, checked her purse and saw the keys were missing, and they immediately called 911. The alleged victim told cops she was known for she known him for eight years, and he claims that he f physically assaults her around twice a year when he drinks heavily. He, you want start? You want to start riots and kill? Have people killed because of this douchebag? Really? <sighs> On Sunday, within three minutes of responding to the nine one one call, Blake was shot seven times in the back as he attempted to get into his car. Again, some context here: he fought with police, resisted arrest, two taser shots. Tried to go to his car. What the hell do you think the police were going to do? Bake you cookies? No. Calls to Blake's fiance, Crump, and the Kenosha Police Department have gone unreturned. So, there is the alleged warrant, or it is the warrant, but the alleged sexual assault he performed on this woman that he knew for eight years. Did it twice, did about twice a year when... He got he started drinking heavily, so when we look back upon this last six days, just in Wisconsin and other parts of the United States, we want to lionize this douchebag. We want to build a monument to this guy. We want to write Black Lives Matter in the streets because this douchebag resisted arrest and before that sexually assaulted a woman, allegedly, obviously, had a warrant out for his arrest was known by the police, apparently, fought the police, and then was shot seven times, and then we're supposed to feel sorry for this asshole? No. Screw this guy. And screw you if you think this guy needs to be lionized. Matter of fact, looking back on this past three and a half, four months, most of these police victims, okay, I wouldn't say deserved it, but we're in a time and place where they put themselves in a position to get themselves involved with the police. Now, in the past, and again, I got to preface this by saying, not a fan of the police. But in the past, there have been some instances where the cops were completely at fault, and they deserve to be brought brought against, you know, brought charges against them, and then be brought against, you know, put into a court of law. That's it. I don't know what I don't know what else to say here. It, we're in a time of place to where we're telling people like that Kyle Rittenhouse who shot those two kid two people that were trying to kill him essentially. He's bad guy, but people like Jacob Blake, Richard Brooks, George Floyd, they're all salt of the earth. Now, did they deserve to die? Maybe, maybe not. I guess in the grand scheme of things, no one deserves to die. But when you put yourself in a situation to where a certain random amount, random amount of unfortunate events causes your death. George Floyd. Apparently, some of the video that I saw recently, that he had two milligrams of fentanyl in his mouth, swallowed it, and that's why he died. Because he had a large amount of fentanyl in his system. By the way, just a little pin drop of fentanyl will kill a sperm whale, essentially. And he put two milligrams in his body. And that what, ha what happens for opiates like that, it causes breathing distress. And why, did he, why, were, there, why were the police there? Well, apparently he tried to pass up a bum 20, a fake 20, a counterfeit 20, to buy some stuff. Maybe he didn't know. I don't know. But why, why was he driving with massive amounts of drugs in the system 
And then, now, I don't let the person who put his knee on that guy's neck, George Floyd, I don't, I don't let him get off, you know, from this. But let's look back. He had, he swallowed a fentanyl pill allegedly, and overdosed and died. It's not the police's fault. However, the optics of it looks bad. Okay. Secondly, Richard Brooks, what did he do? Well, he got drunk, drove to a Wendy's, fell asleep in the drive-through. Police were called. Police knocked on his window and goes, "Hey, dude." Can't sleep. All right. Bye. Cop walked away. Cop looked back. He fell asleep again. Walked over there again. Knocked on the window. Said, hey, dude, go park over there. Let's, let's talk. Cop went over the third time. He was passed out. Then he went back to his car, ran his plates, went back, woke him up. The other police got there. They knew this guy was intoxicated because he did say, I drank some tequila or daiquiris or whatever it was. He walked over the, the DUI certified, I guess, test taker, goes over there, does all the tests. So when they find out that he was completely out of his mind because he thought he was in another town, but they were in Atlanta, fought the cops, smacked him around, grabbed a taser off one of them, started running away, turned back around while he was running, fired a taser at the, the other cop. The cop then shot him and killed him. If he didn't resist arrest, this wouldn't have happened. Sort of a theme going on here. Then we go to Jacob Blake. Same thing. They knew he was there. He had a warrant out for his arrest for se- for alleged sexual assault of a woman that he knows. Fought the cops. Had one in a headlock. Took a taser twice. Didn't stop. Went to the front seat of his car. The cop shot him seven times. Now he's paralyzed. Again, all three of these men, do they deserve to die? No. However, they put themselves in a position to where, well, they put themselves in a position that they shouldn't have been in in the begin with. Don't fight the cops. Don't resist arrest. Don't start grabbing for weapons in the front seat of your car. Don't shoot stolen tasers at other cops. What the hell do you think is going to happen? So, as I finish this up here, is that, is this where we're at? Where we take the worst of society and put them on a pedestal and say, yep, we want to aspire to be like these douchebags. No, of course not. I guess we can, how, what we can learn from all this, don't sexually assault women. Just don't because it's illegal and it's messed up. Don't fight the cops. Don't resist arrest. Don't swallow illegally possessed fentanyl and then swallow it and then die of a drug overdose. How about we not do that? I mean, wouldn't make a lot of sense, right? But that's just me.